Hello everybody and welcome to the G Kaiser Age. My name is Lucian G Kaiser and today we're going to be taking a look at the Bandai Tamashi Nations Full Metal Panic Invisible Victory Metal Build M9 Gernsback Arm Slave. So let's get started. G Kaiser Age launching. All right, and here we have the Metal Build M9 Gernsback from Full Metal Panic Invisible Victory. An awesome anime, and once again, an awesome Metal Build figure from Bandai Tamashi Nations. I picked up this figure, um, I've had it on pre-order for a few months now on the Big Bad Toy Store website. A great place if you want to get figures like this and so much more anime, third-party figures, Transformers, action figures from official toy lines and everything you can name, even Gundams and Gunpla. I definitely recommend you guys checking them out. They are a great website for doing pre-orders for figures like this, but let's go ahead and get started taking a look at the M9 Gernsback for today. Now, I'm not going to go through every major detail because this figure's posability and range of articulation pretty much match the same as the other metal builds. So if you want to see how their articulation is, you can check out my other videos, but I'm going to say it right now, this one matches it and is just absolutely superb. I love the look and the feel of the figure. I actually love this nice military gray. I actually like it more than the Arbalest and the Lavatane's color scheme just because it just feels more militaristic. And this is one of the first arm slaves that you actually see on screen in the original anime. And one of these was piloted by Sosuke Sagura before he upgraded to the Arbalest, which I have the box for in the background there. But let's go ahead and take a closer look at this particular figure. So once again, great detailing, as you can see. The nice coloring on the visor, it is a nice clear green and you can actually see a little bit. The actual camera is built in there too, so you can see the camera. The head of course has the usual rotation, arms have whoops, <laughs> the usual range. The shoulder of course is made to uh, be removable in case of things. But you have the usual range of motion on the arms. Full 360, rotation. So like I said, I'm just gonna go through the quick basic details for a more detailed look at it. You can check out my other figure reviews, but this one pretty much has that same style of posability. So nothing new to report there. You do of course still have the ECS system where you can pull out the electronic camouflage system at different points on the figure and expose that for when it goes not only electronically invisible but actually invisible to the naked eye. Something I went over in detail in one of my previous reviews. You got a nice crunch, nice back and forward. But the biggest thing about these figures, aside from the posability, is just the glorious detail. You get a lot of printed on decal and information. Like the, if you can see it there, the M9 Gurns back right on the front there. And then of course still has the opening cockpit gimmick. So you can open the cockpit, which is located right underneath the head, slide it forward. And you do get a Melissa Mao and a Kurtz Weber pilot that you can put into the figure, which is very cool. And then one of the features that makes this figure a little bit more expensive than the other metal builds is you get the alternate head. This is the commander type unit head for the M9 Gurns back. It includes an ECM ECCM antenna for electronic countermeasures and electronic counter countermeasure warfare. The heads, each one, do come with a moving base connection 
that attaches to the movable neck so you get a double point of articulation there and that's fantastic that you get both of these i love the melissa mal commander type head so i'll be putting that back on but for right now just for ease of the review i'm just going to leave the kurtz weber standard m9 head on here so now let's get to the real show and that is the sheer amount of ungodly weapons <laughs> that this figure comes with that really bulks up the price. So to start with, one of the new weapons that wasn't included with either of the other metal builds is, of course, an enhanced GRA 2 monomolecular cutter from Geontronics Electronics Firm. And it does come with the sheath. And, of course, you can unsheath it there. These are basically designed to cut through any kind of armored material. As I discussed in one of my other reviews, definitely check out those reviews because I go into a little bit more technical detail in those. And then of course you get the standard size combat knife version. Once again, mainly designed for taking out other arm slaves and of course hacking down any kind of reinforced bunkers or anything like that that the arm slave may come up against you get two of the anti-tank daggers again so you get two of these these are explosive daggers um, they can be used for melee combat but really they're meant to be thrown at high speed by the arm slave and they will penetrate the target and then detonate the blade inside of it and of course you get the two grenades once again Two of those, nothing special there. Those out. And now let's get to the some of the newer weapons. So one of the newer weapons we get is this handgun. And the cool thing about this handgun is it is foldable. So you push that forward, fold that in. And then the figure comes with an actual storage rack for it. So it comes with this little storage rack right here. And all you do is clip the gun into that. Now here's the cool part. This storage rack is designed to go behind these shoulder armors. So you can take the shoulder armor off, which is why that shoulder pad is detachable like that. You pull off the piece right here. So that leaves those two little spots there. And then you just plug this right in there. And then you can just plop that back down on the shoulder. There we go. Now these shoulder armor pieces are removable. So if you don't want the shoulder shields on there, you can remove those. But I'm leaving mine on because I just don't want to wear them down and, you know, over time or anything. So now that we've taken a look at the handgun, Let's take a look at some of the bigger guns. So this one that the figure comes with, and this is the only figure that comes with this in the metal build line for the arm slaves, is the Aricon Contralvus GDCB 40 millimeter rifle. And as you can see, it comes with the banana clip. And these clips are detachable, so you can you know either attach them together or you can just have them individual and they just snaps right in here it fits in nice and tucked um, nice and snug inside the uh, catch area and as always really great detail on there even some little printing on it as well you can see that there for the auto and safe all right and let's go ahead and take a look at the next weapon and just so you know, this rifle is the principal weapon that all the arm slaves mainly use. And let's go ahead and take a look at one that really wasn't shown. And this is the 57 millimeter Bofors smoothbore cannon. And it, of course, comes with ammo clips as well that are detachable. And you can, uh, of course, you know swap them around as if he's actually changing out ammo and just click them right back in there and it comes with the kickstands so you can have it laying in a sniper pose which is something very cool i'll show some pictures of that at the end of the video when i'm doing my final thoughts on the figure 
once again some more printing on the side there and then this wire actually plugs into the side skirt here and it's part of the uh, of course sensor upgrade system so basically this links to the main targeting sensor so you can use it like a of course sniper rifle at, for longer distance firing and if you don't want to have the cord it is detachable so you can detach it and the little port that it plugs into actually folds back up into the gun itself so I really love that it's just awesome looking and I'm glad they included this weapon even though it's not really shown in the show and then of course we have one of the more iconic weapons that we have seen a lot in the show and this is the 76 millimeter sniper rifle fantastic looking sniper rifle once again a lot of great detail of course you can also classify this as an anti-material rifle that's what they usually call these nowadays because it's not just for downing tanks but it can be used for any kind of reinforced material penetration and of course the stand can fold up the ammo clips can be separated so you can just have one ammo clip on there and it can be removed and then for storage, you simply flip over the scope, fold the kickstand up, the barrel folds over, this folds down like that, and then you have it in storage mode, and then you have a clip right here to where you can attach it to the back. Now the figure comes with swappable pieces for the back, so this piece that you see right here, you can pull it off. Let's be very gentle with it. And then you can put this piece in its place and it's basically extended out. It can be a little bit tough to slide it back in there sometimes. There we go. Just want to always be careful with these figures. There's a lot of money, so you don't want to mess them up. But as you can see, now it's raised out versus the other one. And now you can mount the sniper rifle. And you can do that with any of the other rifles and weapons too. So now he's got his handy dandy faithful sniper rifle mounted there. Let's go ahead and take a look at the next weapon. One that I do not believe was ever shown in the show either. It is literally an arm slave sized javelin missile launcher even says that it's made by Raython General Electric and listed as a javelin missile in the official specs and you actually get a large scale javelin to mount into it so you can actually slide that in so now you have it actually mounted in there and if you want to get it back out you just push from the back and it slides back out so you can have it like partially out as if the arm slave is just firing it and I absolutely love it. It's very cool. All right, and the last of the extra weapons is this Versail 2 all-purpose missile launcher. And it's basically, you know, the missiles can be used against aircraft, tanks, armor targets, pretty much anything. And it's very cool looking. And of course, once again, you can fold it up. And it's got another mounting point, so you can mount it on the back as well. So, I absolutely love it. This figure is fantastic and all the weapons you get with it. And then, of course, like with the other figure, you get pilots to seat in it. So you get a Melissa Mao and you get a Kurtz Weber. I got Kurtz in there right now and Melissa right here. You also get them standing. So here's Kurt's standing figure. And then you get the Melissa Mao standing figure. But you also get the commander that's usually on the bridge. And even more important, you get the ultimate lady of the hour leader herself of mithril 
and Captain of the Tawatha Denanen. Oh yes indeed. And I absolutely love it. <laughs> they didn't have to include her, but I'm actually glad that they did. So definitely very cool. You of course get a whole bunch of hands. You get gripping hands, you get different trigger hands for the different weapons, which is nice. So you get ones that are more slanted for certain weapons. You get open hands for gripping other melee weapons. And they're all very well detailed. So you get a lot of those. And then as always, you get a nice manual and a display base. Now the display base, once again, because Bandai can't just leave well enough alone. They created a display base that you can mount every accessory that this thing comes with on the display base. All the hands, the alternate head, and all of the weapons can be mounted on the display base. So you don't have to worry about having bags of weapons laying around. You can have it all mounted on that display base. And as you can see, once again, all the figures. Hey, Tessa, you are awesome. All right, and then the last thing, once again, like I was saying, one of the other weapons that you get is the wire gun, wire hook. And that can be attached in either one of the forearms. And the cool thing is the other arm slaves also, uh, the ARX Arbalest has the same kind of arm slots on it. So you can actually mount this on it as well. So if you want to have this shooting out of its arm, you have the option of doing that too. All right, so let's go ahead and wrap things up. So this figure, once again, did cost me quite a lot. It cost $399 to get this particular figure from the Big Bad Toy Store, but it's absolutely worth it. I love all the detail on it. The posability is fantastic like the previous ones. And it is definitely worth every penny to have in your collection if you're already collecting metal builds or if this is your first one that you're thinking about getting. You can still order them on the Big Bad Toy Store's website. Now, if you need something that's just as detailed, just as fun to play with, but isn't going to cost you a car payment or a house payment, I can definitely highly recommend these guys. This is the Bandai. 160 scale arm slave model kit series they have all of the metal builds that you see here but in a smaller scale basically it's 160 scale but because the arm slaves are smaller than normal mecha it comes out to being the size of a normal 1144 scale mobile suit and it comes with tons of weapons as you can see ways to mount those weapons and it's extremely well detailed and very poseable. I have reviews of both this version and the standard M9 version with the sniper rifle. Both of those reviews are on my YouTube channel here. Definitely check them out. I'll list them in the um, comment section or not in the comment section but <laughs> in the detail section below for the description of the video. So that way you can check those out. But yeah, they are definitely the great way to go. If you can't afford to get your hands on a metal build, these figures are definitely a fantastic alternative. And I highly recommend them. They're easy to build. You can easily do it and detail it. And because their base coloring is a nice deep gray, you can easily change the color and do like custom builds with them. So if you're ever interested, definitely check those out. They're available on the Big Bad Toy Store as well. You can also get them at places like a USA Gundam store or Hobby Link Japan. But once again, my name is Lucian G. Kaiser here in the G. Kaiser Age. If you like what you see here, definitely check out some of my other videos. Like I said, again, I've got uh, videos for all the metal builds that I have collected so far. I've got videos for these two guys right here. And then, of course, I've got several other videos for all kinds of other content. Hey, if you want to check out some of the things I'll be doing uh, for my channel and streaming, I do have a Facebook, a Twitter, and a Twitch page. Those will all be listed down below. You can look into that, you know, join up 
and you know be ready to see some amazing content the moment I start posting that it's being uploaded as always please leave a like favorite and comment and let me know what some of your favorite mecha are and anything that you'd like to see me review in the future I have a huge collection and expect to see some more reviews coming soon again my name is Lucian G Kaiser from the G Kaiser age signing out until the next battle